one of the most important things, in addition to listening to your attorneys, is keeping good records. Um, and keep your records separate, your business records separate from your personal records. As your businesses grow and prosper, it will become more and more important. The, the information that you keep and the, and the financial data will help you make uh, good, sound business decisions. <coughs> so start off on the right foot by keeping, uh, you know, start keeping those good records now. In addition to business records, keep all your organizational documents, keep them safe. You know, a lot of people scan them in now and maybe uh, make sure that you have backup copies for of those documents, um, your stock issuance, stock certificates and, and whatnot. Um, and HR and payroll, um, as you grow and hire people, um, those are very important things that you need to take care of. That's where companies can get into trouble quickly if they um, get behind on payroll taxes and reporting, um, that type of information. All right, so can't stress this enough. I think Rich was talking about this, just the importance of keeping good records so that when you need to go back and get them, that they're there for you. So I actually had a client, say with their equity, equity documents, where they didn't keep good records and they had to actually go out to the investors and say, was this the amount of stock options that I gave you? And those people were like, well, they could have put anything on the paper. So it, it's one of those things to, to do in advance. It cracked me up that they actually hadn't kept any records. Um, I had another client that uh, didn't have any of their debt agreements. So they could have had their investor come to them and immediately demand the $2 million that was owed and they would have gone bankrupt. So um, we're a family friend, but it's one of those things to just keep in mind to kind of have documents, have things that are signed, and just hold them aside in case you need them. So, and there's a, a list of all different things on there to kind of keep track of. Um, so, and it, what you'd expect, what you would want to keep for your personal information. So, hey, I need to keep tax records because if the IRS comes in and asks for things, I'm going to need to give them to them. So, there's also, uh, when you start out, um, understand that cost on a lot of things is a huge, huge issue. So, and it's kind of figuring out, okay, how should I keep track of these things? What's going to be the best, uh, you know, software system or, you know, is Excel going to make sense? Should I use kind of a, a software system, Quicken? Um, and a lot of these things are fairly cheap. And as you kind of grow and get a lot bigger, um, it makes sense to kind of be able to get that information in something that is a little bit more sophisticated and will just help you track it rather than, you know, I've seen an Excel spreadsheet that had 20 megabytes because the client had just never bothered to move it into an actual system and it ended up crashing so often on their computer that they're spending like an hour just waiting for the spreadsheet to open and then when it crashed they'd have to go through and do it again. And somebody sitting around spending time doing that just doesn't make any sense. So, um, and then there's also uh, a lot of good payroll uh, systems out there. As you get bigger, um, but you're not kind of to the point where you're kind of maybe 30, 40, 50 million dollar company, it doesn't make sense to go and hire somebody to come in and do your payroll for you. You can contract with a lot of uh, good payroll companies where you just send out the information saying, hey, here's who I want you to pay and how much. And they'll take care of all the nitty gritty, figuring out the taxes and the withholdings and all that kind of stuff, which uh, Rich is more knowledgeable on than I am. So, so when you go through and actually gather together all those records, you can put together uh, financial statements. And one that kind of people are most interested in in this size is cash flow statement, because people want to know, okay how much uh, money is going out the door and how much money is coming in the door. So I have a good sense of kind of, um, do I need to go get more money? Can I you know, go out and buy this new computer that I need to grow my business? Can I hire somebody else? And so it's really important to kind of make sure you're just taking a look at that. Um, kind of also planning out, we're gonna talk about budgeting later, to see, okay, I actually had, I had a client that uh, didn't budget got to be where they're about 100 million in revenue and it was owned by one guy and what ended up happening is they weren't keeping good records and he thought he had a bunch more money than he did and so they went out and bought a bunch of new shiny machinery 
and then all of a sudden had a $10 million bill come in and he had to put his own money into the company in order to prevent it from going under, So, which he was very unhappy about. So um, income statement, so there's kind of, there's a cash versus accrual. Uh, the cash is just, okay, what items have I actually paid for in cash? Um, and then for the accrual method, it's, uh, uh, so I've actually made a sale, but I have it's, uh, I need to collect the money from the customer, so that would be an amount that is due to me, but I don't have it in cash yet. So, and what that helps you do is figure out, okay, is my company actually generating money if I, t even though it may not be bringing in cash, which is helpful to see if your company is actually being profitable over time. So, and then uh, balance sheet is, okay, uh, how much cash do I have, how much AR do I have, and that'll total up to a, an amount of assets that you have. And then you look at, okay, how much do I owe people? So that would be the liabilities that I have, and then how much money I've actually put in the company and made. So, and those will balance against each other, and you can uh, evaluate how healthy a company is depending on you know, how much debt they have versus how much assets they have, those kind of metrics. So, um, and then little less common more down the road is a statement of equity and that's really okay who owns what how much uh, you know outstanding options stock those kind of things are out there and as you progress as a company that can become more complicated but there's people out there that can help so these are common balance sheet and uh, income statement accounts let's see so cash pretty simple AR uh, fixed assets. Most companies I see don't have a whole lot of fixed. It's going to be you know buying computers and that kind of things for stuff that might last a few years. Um, so it, it's helpful if you say you have like two or three bank accounts to have separate accounts for each of those, so you can kind of track and figure out how much is in any given uh, bank account. So it's kind of keeping things separate enough so that you can manage things as you need. So um, and then for income statement, uh, I find that the biggest expense by far at the beginning is just uh, payroll. So you got some employees that you brought in and that makes up almost, you know, somewhere between 50 and 80 percent of all the expenses and the other, the only other big one that I find at the size is usually rent. So, and everything else is, is very small down there. So, and it's just kind of tracking that, making sure that, okay, the expenses that I'm having to pay, I have enough cash to be able to pay them. and kind of forecasting that out and planning on, okay, I need to go out and find another you know, uh, $10,000 or $5,000 to keep things going. So just some, uh, some other miscellaneous items. Um, choose a year end. So yeah, everyone needs a year end. Um, most people are on the calendar year. Um, some people aren't, but most people are. It, it's easier. Um, uh, bank account reconciliations. Um, it's just like your own personal checkbook. Um, so, but you will have a b different business account. Just make sure you reconcile it every month. Um, you don't want something odd to be happen happening, just like your own personal account. Um, record retention. Um, we mentioned it earlier. So, you know, your organizational documents, your tax filings. Um, general rule. Uh, so, organizational documents keep forever. Um, equity information keep forever. Um, Tax records generally is a seven-year rule of thumb. Um, some of them may be longer. Um, uh, your, your financial statements, um, generally plan on keeping those forever. Your box of receipts, eh, three, four years, um, enough to support it um, um, if, if audited. Uh, budgeting, um, I think David had mentioned that before, budget out. We've had some conversations with some of you and you're already figuring out your burn rate and how much you're spending each month. I mean, that's, that's, that's budgeting. Um, uh, um, but as you get bigger and more, um, more people, you, you know, you'll be budgeting for payroll or for, for you know, rent or facilities or for um, capital. So um, HR, we mentioned that before, and I'll mention it again later. Um, contract management, uh, just keep cap track of all those contracts. So, um, you know, you're entering, you're entering into contracts with, with some customers or who's ever purchasing your product. Uh, keep uh, that, um, keep the copy of those signed contracts. A lot of times, 
the signed copies don't keep it, uh, don't always make it back to you. Make sure you keep uh, obtain that signed contract. Um, stock option rec records, um, mention that again because we often see that those records aren't as uh, thorough as they should be. All right, now moving on to the fun stuff, taxes. <laughs> yeah, bookkeeping's great, but why do you keep books? Well, you have to pay taxes at some point. Um, and um, what we would, um, I assume that most of you are set up as corporations. Um, even if you're not set up as corporations, if you're an LLC or you're going to elect to be an S Corp, um, uh, these similar comments would apply. But it, uh, most organizations, most startups that want to go out and get venture financing um, would be set up as corporations. Um, and frequently they're set up as Delaware corporations. Um, uh, uh, issue number one, file timely. All right, you have a calendar year corporation, is their tax return is due March 15th, you get an automatic six month uh, extension. Um, so, uh, ma but make sure you file that extension. Um, corporation taxes are based upon net income. So um, if you're not making money, you know, don't, um, you, you don't owe any federal taxes. Um, California will still want $800 from you. But, um, but again, I can't stress enough, file your tax returns timely. If you don't, you start um, messing up some, some tax accounting elections. So um, if you haven't filed, then come clean. There's some ways to get around um, any issues that may have uh, derived there. Um, uh, federal forms, 1120, California forms, 100. Um, every, most, other, most states have some sort of filing um, a corporate filing form. Um, uh, so I'm uh, just talking to you all because you're here in California. Um, some of you may have what's called a nexus in other states. Maybe you have an employee there or you have an office there. Um, then you'd have to file a tax return in, in multiple states. Um, but for now, my comments are really just related to um, California. Um, so if you are in a position where you're making money then, uh, and paying taxes, then you also uh, may be in a situation where you have to pay quarterly estimated taxes. Um, and that, those would be due um, um, March, June, uh, September, and December. So employment taxes, uh, again, file timely. Um, don't get behind on this stuff. This is where I've seen a lot of companies just get in trouble. So if, if you've ever worked before and you got a paycheck and you expect you're supposed to get $100 and you only walk away with $70. That $30 the employer has to withhold for you and then has to pay it to the federal government or the state government. Um, and if they don't do that, the, the IRS and the state has, doesn't have a lot of sympathy for companies that don't pay over that $30. So they'll come after you. So um, file timely and deposit timely. We've mentioned before about using payroll services they'll help keep you, um, keep you honest in, in this matter. They'll calculate the taxes and then they'll ask for the cash so that they can deposit it on your behalf. So, um, so what, type, what type of employment taxes? So there's income taxes, there's you know, your own personal income taxes that they withhold on your behalf. So that's federal and state income taxes. Um, there's uh, FICA, Social Security and FICA um, that is withheld. Um, that's split between the employer's responsibility and the employee's responsibility. As of last night, that uh, payroll tax uh, reduction was uh, at least agreed upon, so I expect it to pass for the full year. So um, your, the personal responsibility was reduced from 6.2% to 4.2%. The employer still has to pay a 6.2%, but um, so I grouped those together as, as employment taxes and I think you know, if you've ever had a paycheck before or a W-2 before, you, you've seen those type of taxes that are withheld. Um, in total, it's a little, um, historically at 15%, but due to these reductions, it's about 13% of the, the compensation cost all in, shared between the employer and the employee. Uh, then there's a host of others. There's federal unemployment, there's state unemployment, there's state disability, and here in San Francisco, the companies also have a payroll tax at, um, based upon the total payroll. 
Um, for those of you that were here last year and heard all the negotiations with Twitter down and there's a payroll tax exemption for them. Um, once you grow to have more than $250,000 in payroll, you will be subject to this payroll tax. So again, on with employment taxes and I, I just I continue on this because this hits everybody early, um, whether you're profitable or not. Um, just some of the common forms, um, W-2, 1099s. If you were in business and um, operating last year, um, you should be, and you paid any contractors 1099, or paid any contractors last year, you should be issuing 1099s before the end of the month. Um, you should also, if you had employees, you should be also be issuing W-2s. I well, should have done that last month, but you could do it, do it soon. Um, there's annual uh, 940 um, for all the withholding taxes. There's quarterly withholding taxes also. Um, California has some comparable forms also. So federal and state both have filing requirements for uh, these um, uh, withholding taxes and payroll taxes. Other taxes, so there are other fees, um, some taxes. Um, uh, so just because you file a tax, re tax return doesn't mean you're done. Um, you generally will have an, an annual fee to the Secretary of State just for the purpose of doing business or registering as a company with the state. Um, if you are organized under Delaware law, you also will have a franchise tax payable to uh, the state of Delaware. Um, it's an online filing and calculation. There's two different ways to calculate it. Try both out because one often will give you some obscenely high um, fee because um, it's based upon number of shares. So based upon how you are organized, um, it can um, give you a little shock. But if you try both methods, um, there, there's one method that's, uh, that's much more reasonable. Um, that's due March 1st. Um, so if you have been in existence last year, you should be checking that out before the end of this month. Uh, sales and use taxes. If you start selling a tangible product, you will be required to collect and remit sales tax. Um, now, if you start sending it all over the U.S., then you also have some issues there about how, um, whether or not sales taxes is, is, you have to collect and remit you know, on sales you make to Missouri. It, it, sales tax, sales and use taxes are state um, level tax. And states are um, strapped for cash these days and they're being more aggressive and um, the number of audits are increasing too. With that, I think that our uh, presentation for today was going to wrap up. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me or David. Our contact information is here and it's current. So with that, I want to thank you all for joining us.